On July 21st, 11 days before he referred the issue of Site C to the BC Utility Commission on August 2nd, on July 21st he did something that, uh, that uh, sealed the fate of the Site C that is going to continue. And what he did was this, he appointed the Vice President of BC Hydro in charge of building Site C the man that were promoting the building of the site C. And what is it, what's his uh, job uh, to build? Uh, yes, uh, under Christy Clark, yeah. Mr. Chris O'Reilly, Mr. Horgan promoted him to the presidency of BC Hydro. If you really want to know if the, you know, from the BC Utility Commission, if site C should go ahead or not, you don't put the man in charge of building and promoting the building of the site C dam as a president of BC Hydro. I believe that was a signal to the establishment, to the big business interest, that he is going to continue uh, building Site C because he's putting a man that he was in charge of it as a president of BC Hydro. So what mess Under the treaty, we're promised a way of life. Uh, uh, there's a national oral promise that was made that states that we should be allowed to hunt, fish, and trap as if we had never entered into treaty. Well, because of all the mercury, we can't eat the fish because there's a huge health risk with that. You know, and nobody's ever done a study. We ran our own study to find out, like, is the mercury going away or is it, what's going on with it? And, uh, a few years back, we, we found that all the fish that we caught had very high levels of mercury. So there was no indication to us that the mercury is disappearing. Where are we going to be able to harvest fish that we don't have to worry about the, a mercury concern. There are other rivers that that we fish, um, and a lot of people are going to say, well, why don't you go fish over there? Well, we have the Murray River, the Pine River, the Wolverine, uh, the Wapiti Rivers, the Burnt River. Well, all those rivers have coal mines on them, and there's selenium issues in those rivers. There's warnings stacked up all on trees warning people to be careful of the high levels of selenium. So I guess we get to choose. Do we eat fish contaminated with selenium or should we eat fish contaminated with mercury? What Premier Horgan has now done by going against the economic evidence, the ecological evidence, the issue of reconciliation with First Nations, by breaking election promises, <clears throat> He has really um, signaled to the people of BC that uh, it's business as usual, democracy be damned. Well, any, any rational reading of the BCUC brings you to the conclusion that this project is not needed, that this project is high risk, and that terminating the project is not going to cost you any more than trying to complete it. Um, uh, and furthermore, the BCUC also said there are cheaper alternatives al available at lower unit costs per energy. Well, I was, I was really pleased with the uh, conference this weekend. Uh, we had 300 people here, and it sort of took me back a little bit because it, it was the kind of, of meeting that I was used to when we brought in the Agricultural Land Reserve uh, a long, long time ago. There are people that are committed to saving the farmland at Site, site C, the First Nations Territory, the forests, the animals, yeah. the, 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 that beautiful valley. And, and so I've come out of this feeling very, very um, pleased because we, we're seeing the birth of a new movement. And my comment to the, to the last group, we talk about so, Social Democrats, is unfortunately what we have witnessed is the NDP going from being Social Democrats to Liberals. Uh, when you when you uh, go to bed with the corporations that are building the dam and the corporations that are going to ship LNG to, to to well to do fracking and make the LNG and then ship it, that's not social democrat democracy. That is pure out and out uh, uh, jo joining the, uh, the 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 corporate forces. Yeah. So we're looking at uh, 8,300 acres, I think, is of Class One and Two land. 
that'll be lost. Now, the class one and two land, there's not much of it in BC. It was, it was, it's what grows your vegetables. And we've got a little bit in Richmond and Delta, a little bit over here in Vancouver Island, but not much else. And we're flooding that. And we get from our own government a statement, well, there's lots of lot class one to five, thousands of acres of class one to five land left. That's a lie. We're talking about alluvial soils. And you get an NDP government that's lying to us, that's even as bad as what they're doing to us. And he said, you know, we'll put, we'll put this group in place to keep the cost in check. Well, they can do, do whatever they want, all the cost checking they want. If, this, if the geology is faulty and they can't find a way around that, uh, which there's no real indication that they have at this point, then the costs are just going to keep spiraling up. And, uh, you know, there's, it, I think it's still an open question as to whether this thing can really be feasibly constructed at any cost. But, you know, they committed to, uh, to sending this to the Utilities Commission, where it should have gone in the first place, and it didn't under the Liberals. Uh, and they should have also uh, committed to basically respecting the spirit of what the report said. Instead, what you had was, and I think the, the they in this situation is actually senior bureaucrats, staff within the government, who, again, are, are liberal holdovers and, and, and are being long time committed to this project. And they have a way of, of kind of narrowing down the scope of information that they pass up the chain to their bosses uh, and, and, and presenting a particular kind of picture and taking certain things out of context. And what happened that was really unusual here is you had two uh, uh, senior staff. One of them was named, is named Dave Nicolaison, and I, I can't remember the, the woman's name. That They wrote a letter uh, to the Utilities Commission after the report came out and it was very, as Harry Swain, who ran the joint review panel, he's commented on this, just how unprecedented this is and how snarky this letter was. And it was essentially they were browbeating the Utilities Commission into changing their report. And what ended up coming out of it was some, uh, some amendments which really gave them a little bit of daylight or gave them a little bit more to work with in terms of, you know, making the economic case that Oregon eventually made to the public, which is totally faulty. Uh, but here you have a couple of senior bureaucrats who are telling an independent regulator to change their findings. Uh, th that is totally inconsistent with how that kind of uh, system, that regulatory system, should work. What I want to say about the BCUC, much as it felt like a really good opportunity to say our piece and really speak our truth, the parameters of what we're allowed to talk about were very limited and as you probably know the BCUC report was asked to only comment on economical matters so that meant that those of us who went with very passionate views on indigenous rights, treaty 8, environmental impacts, climate change and all of those things well some of us did cheat a little bit and we brought some of those things into our comments but they did not make the report because that was not the mandate of the report. So um, I also attended the BCUC hearing in Victoria and there were hundreds of people. It was, it was an amazing thing to sit in that room with speaker after speaker after speaker going up to the mic with really, really informed comments. We felt like we were participating in something really good but we know what happened after that. I think you're right that it probably was by most media presented as 50-50, so uh, my main comment on that was that's fine, even if that were true, had they really wanted to stop it for other reasons, there were enough reasons in there. But what it does for me is it highlights the fact, once again, that we weren't allowed to talk about indigenous rights, climate change, and environmental impacts, because let's face it, had those issues been in the report, there would have been no choice to make. It absolutely would have been a no. Well, I think we've heard from uh, Chief uh, Roland today about the court action that's been anticipated and planned for and implemented. And, you know, I, I am, am just so disheartened that a First Nation that has a treaty with Canada is still going to court to protect what was spoken to, to be preserved for them in perpetuity as a people, and yet here they are, <clears throat> and I've often wondered just, just how much are the Treaty 8 First Nations supposed to give to this economy? 
this is the third major dam in their territory. And I'm not sure if enough people have turned their attention to the cumulative infringement on their Aboriginal rights that this represents. And so when we start to consider that with a treaty, it really calls the government to task to live up to the treaty that has been signed. Because it was signed on behalf of you. It was signed on behalf of me <clears throat> and all Canadians. And so it's a very uh, sacred document to the First Nations and it's a commitment from this government or previous governments, but certainly the responsibility still falls on the existing governments today. Every dollar spent by British Columbia Hydro is financed by the province. You've already paid most of that money. It's already in your tax bill. So when they say $4 billion, that's simply wrong. $2.4 billion has already been spent on the project. Finance, spent, interest due. They also had talked about the $1.8 billion of reclamation. Now, that's an odd number, and no one actually agrees with it. The only explanation for such a high price would be if the plan would be to set up a uh, Peace River uh, Disneyland <laughs> with space rides and the rest. Well, we know that's not the point. The Premier asked the BCUC its opinion, and then when he received it, it wasn't uh, to his liking, so he just changed the answer. The left bank is quite unstable, and they had the risk of two landslides so far this year. Having gone through the more recent engineering studies, I can tell you that is a continuing concern. Mm -hmm. And they're very worried that there might be a further landslide risk. Is that that's just due to the makeup of the soil on that? It's God's fault. The fact is, if you're an experienced hydroelectric developer like Hydro-Quebec, uh, you're better at this than if you're inexperienced. And it's been 20 years since BC Hydro has done this, and there's a learning curve. Yeah. Another major delay means that they'll be bounced out yet another year into the future yeah. with all of the costs incumbent, which are, of course, inflation, but also interest on all the costs already committed. Yeah. So that'll be pretty pricey. Now that could well end the project. In a matter of 20 years or 25 years, is there a possibility it would actually pay for itself? No. Number one, this is a 40-year-old project. It's obsolete in our current technological world. The same thing has occurred with solar and electricity. We, the costs of those have been reduced by at least 50% over the last five years. Now why is that? Well, those are assembly line products. We are very good at assembly lines. Yeah. You make enough wind turbines, you get good at making wind turbines. You yeah. make enough solar panels, you get good at making solar panels. One-off projects like Site C, you don't have that experience. You don't have that. Yeah. What has happened at the price of power in our area of the world. The price this year was the lowest price in history. The price next year from the forward markets on Wall Street is even lower. Uh, it appears that the, the uh, government was um, essentially channeling the corporations on this, on, uh, you know, on the uh, Site C uh, decision. And that's the only way I can sort of make sense of what was happening on this hard-pressed to figure out how a government could have made such a bad decision um, with the facts of the ready, unless there's an extremely compelling reason for them to go in the other direction. So in the, in, against the direction of environmental, sustainability, power issues, uh, fiscal issue, issues, the, the and aboriginal issues. I think British Columbians would be aghast if they uh, were aware of the uh, uh, the you know, the scale of, of what's happening and uh, how it's potentially going to affect um, their day-to-day -day lives down the road and those of their children. Because um, if the deficit, if the debt on this incurred turns out to be as big as, as some independent auditors believe, um, they're going to have difficulty in sustaining uh, social programs and, uh, and and other things that are, we take commonly take for granted. Now. I, I think a mistake is often made by people in thinking that the corporate media are kind of like intentionally pulling the wool over people's eyes. 
in my experience, having worked in the corporate media, it's more a matter of a lack of resources and a, a, a lack of a drive for like true news values. Corporate media, they're, they by their very you know business model need to tell stories in a way that basically makes people click on them. So they need to be more sensational. Uh, whereas we try to focus on being foundational. The corporate media, by and large, don't really do a great job of public interest journalism these days, of you know following up on a story. We see it time and time again on different issues. When I heard the government say they had no choice because if they terminated, they would have to pay for the interest costs and they would cost $150 million a year in interest and that would derail, basically, the rest of their agenda. Um, and I just couldn't let that stand. That, that wasn't an argument that I found at all convincing. Um, so the interest costs, if the government took that on, would have been at maximum $150 million a year. That sounds like a lot of money, um, but in the, in the context of the BC budget, it's really a rounding error. More to the point, I think, I guess what, what has concerned me is I think enough people around the cabinet were convinced by senior bureaucrats and finance officials that that economic um, uh, threat was real. Um, and, uh, and that's the problem right there uh, in terms of who got listened to. When the BCUC report came, most of us who saw that thought the BCUC had given the government every reason they needed to terminate. Um, but what we ended up hearing from various uh, MLAs is that the government took the BCUC report and then asked for further analysis of that report from their own finance officials. And that the finance officials came back and told them, well, the costs, as the BCUC said, of termination or continuation were basically equivalent, but that the accounting treatment was not. And, uh, and that the accountant treatment of termination would derail their agenda. My, my other concern is what does it mean to, to hear that accounting procedures would trump good policy and the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People? Um, there's something, I think, profoundly telling and wrong with that. It's not only in Canada where the indigenous people and people of the, of the territories are trying to protect the land. It's everywhere where you see large-scale industry come in and trample on the rights of the indigenous people of that territory and rape and pillage the land and leave nothing for the people that depend on it. I absolutely had every hope that he was going to do the right thing as a human being and um, unfortunately he, he did what most politicians do. They do what they minimal necessary to, um, to appease the public and then they turn on them. Interestingly enough when the two Green Party leaders were here, I, I was sitting in the back and I thought to myself, they're here for myself. My integrity would not have allowed me to be pressured into agreeing to go ahead. We count on those people that we elect on, on a premise that they were going to stand behind their integrity and what, the, integrity and what they say that they're going to protect us and that they're going to do what's right. And while I appreciate their presence here, I, f I really felt betrayed. I had a conversation with Craig and, uh, and he said, but you know, I think that, that it's because, you know, if they did that, then the Liberals would still be in power. And I said, but you know what? I would still have my integrity. I would still have that and I would not waver from it for anything. That, you know what, if it's going to be the same old, same old, you know what, at least I still have my integrity. 
Well, what we did was uh, uh, immediately following the, um, the summit, we prepared this communique that you're uh, referencing. And um, the point of view there was to, to be public about our deliberations. And it was, it was a public meeting and, and um, bringing people together as we did. And we wanted to say, well, this is so we've had a good talk and we've heard from um, a variety of people about the economic justification the government had given. And clearly that economic justification doesn't hold water. It's just not credible. Laid out in our you know, sort of 10-point action plan was, first of all, that um, we want to support the First Nations who are uh, fighting the government in court, seeking an injunction to the project, have it stopped. And we think the government, that we can certainly fundraise for that. We raised $3,000 at the meeting uh, to put to the uh, legal defense. And um, <clears throat> um, Moreover, we take the position the government should actually walk away from that court case and allow the, the treaty to remain um, uh, intact and honored by the current government. Our other points that we talk about uh, relate to sort of next steps. Um, and they include things like, well, this project is continuing, then perhaps the uh, government would um, uh, provide us a plan of how they intend to deal with the social dislocation and uh, the potential uh, murdered and missing Indigenous women that will result in this mega pro from this mega project, trafficking of women and children that may go through the site there, all the kinds of things that uh, we were raising earlier, before the government decided to, to continue the project and see whether or not um, we can't avoid some of those calamities. Then it goes to the question of, um, of other kind of legal issues. There's a, a uh, BC Hydro currently has a strategic lawsuit against public participation. Some individuals were involved in a, allegedly involved in a peaceful protest at the side of the Peace River. Um, they're facing um, a, a court case for their um, peaceful protest. And the NDP and opposition had promised that they would bring in anti slap suit legislation, legislation to stop these kinds of lawsuits that are meant to stifle uh, public um, participation in public discourse. And so we're calling on the government to, in fact, bring that legislation in immediately in the spring set setting, uh, session um, and do away with the court case that they're having against the, um, those individuals who were up in the Peace River some time ago protesting the dam. So the other things that we were interested in learning more about really was, given that the um, materials that have been made public by the government about their decision-making process don't seem to... Um, um, have much credibility, we'd like to see the material that they did have in order that we could better understand how the government made its decision. Um, the, we're also concerned about the a potential takeover of the, one of the large construction firms that's just been brought on um, to, to do the next project at the dam, and um, it's been taken over by a, a Chinese government state-owned enterprise or at least that's the proposal, and we think that should be looked at carefully and is a reason to reject continuing with the project. Um, there are other issues around the geotechnical problems, which the Premier has assured us in his press announcement that um, those problems are behind us. And yet now we learn in the court case that the uh, West Moberly and Prophet River First Nation are bringing against the government in the process of discovery, the PC Hydro says, Oh, those problems are not, not gone yet. They're uh, deeply concerned about further geotechnical problems. We'd like to see the release of all those documents that, well, they may contradict what the Premier said, but fair enough. Transparency is sort of what the um, uh, NDP party stood for, what the Green Party stand for, and now that they're in government, uh, we'd like to see transparency so we have a look at those records. Um, as much as we can, I think, going forward, we're looking for new information. Um, that might uh, sway the government in terms of uh, pulling a stop to the project. We've seen that both in um, um, Newfoundland and Labrador with the Muskrat Falls project and indeed with the uh, Kiosk project in Manitoba, both are suffering, uh, suffering from uh, huge uh, cost overruns um, because of geotechnical problems, not dissimilar to the situation in the Peace River um, project at Site C. And, um, and yet those projects continued, and, and we're worried here that the government, these costs will just keep escalating, and the government will continue without recognizing it's actually made a mistake. And just like when you've got an old car and it's not working very well, and you, you repair one thing, you repair another, you come up against a big bill and you pay that, 
eventually got a time to trade in that car. Mm -hmm. And we're worried that uh, this is one of these things that would just be a slow bleed and things would get worse. And we'd like the government to come to its senses and take another look at this and, and bring a stop. The Premier told us that uh, the bond rating agencies would give us a very big problem if we stopped the project. And gee, a few days after his announcement, uh, bond rating agencies come up with a news release saying that um, their problem is that this, if this project continues, they may downgrade our debt. Mm -hmm. Um, nothing seems to add up. Uh, so we're hoping that people will give their heads a shake uh, as, as we move along here and if we're able to tell more people about the difficult situation we're facing that things will in fact get better and this project will get um, turned around.